This, this, this session is the, the Minsky program. And how many people here have actually used simulation software? Quite a few, that's good. What, what, normally what, Vensim or? Okay, well this, this package doesn't do everything Vensim can do yet. Uh, but I'll quickly show how it does do what you can do with Vensim anyway. And then I'll show you how to use it for the producing financial models, which is the thing that you can't really easily do in any of the existing programs. So just like with Vensim, you have a palette up here where you can insert variables, constants, uh, time, integral block, and mathematical functions. Um, if you just click on that block, you then get the uh, create a variable, and I'll call this one GDP, and you can then, once you click it, attach to the mouse, drop it anywhere you like in the palette, and I'm now going to build the Goodwin model as rapidly as I can. So I have a constant now, which I'm going to call LP for labor productivity, and say there's one unit of, uh, one, work, one worker produces one unit of output. Bring those two together, click on divide, bring in a divide block, block as well, dividing GDP by labor productivity, and have another variable, which is the, the workforce. And I'll just call this, just call it labor. Notice I'm not giving any values to these yet, and you'll see why in a moment. Now if I then divide labor by the population, I'm just going to work with a constant population. Say there's 110 people, in, a million people in the economy. Then I divide by that, I've now got the employment rate, which is another variable. Again, I'm not going to give a value to that yet. And now I'm going to feed this into Milton Friedman's fantasy of Nehru. So if you're in there is such a thing as a null accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. Let's say it's 5% unemployment or 95% employment. But if I subtract one from the other, I now have the pressure that's going to cause change in the uh, wage rate. And if I now multiply that by the slope of the Phillips curve reaction, so I'm going to have another constant here, which I'm going to call fill slope for the Phillips curve. Let's give that a value of 10. I multiply that. I now have the rate of the, the, the rate of change of wage, but not the percentage rate of change. Now I need to multiply it by the, the wage value itself to get the um, actual wage level. This is where I bring down an integral block. Now one thing, if you're used to Vensim and so on, they simply have an integration block. You feed something through. You feed a wire through. You get a wire out. I prefer to work with actually named variables. And if you right-click on that block or double-click, you can now change its name, something like, for example, the wage. I'll give the initial value of 0.9 units of output. And now if I right-click on the wage, I copy the variable, bring it over here, I've now got the beginnings of a dynamic system. So I'll quickly wire this together. At the moment, it doesn't have context-sensitive clicking. You've got to change from move mode to wire mode. But I can now start wiring all this up. So I've now got GDP divided by labor productivity. Gives you the employment. Employment divided by population gives you the employment rate. Subtract the employment Nehru from the employment rate, you get the, the pressure to change the uh, wage. Multiply that by the slope of the Phillips curve, and you're now getting towards a, a function for the wage rate. Multiply that. I'll just bring down another multiply block from here. Multiply that by the wage. Integrate it. You have the wage, the straight differential equation. So multiply that by that, and integrate. I've now got the wage rate. And now I've got all I need really to put a dynamic model together. So again, make sure you click to move mode when you add something additional here. If I multiply the wage level by labor, I can now copy this variable, bring it down here, right click and choose flip and turn it around so I create a circuit. If I multiply wages by labor, of course I have the wage bill. So I'll just wire those up quickly. Bring down another variable I'll call the wage bill. Flip. Whoops. Oh, now I've probably got a bug. I, I better try to read. This is, it's very new software. There's only been about 500 hours programming going into this. So there are bugs, and that's something I did just then obviously made the variable disappear. I may have accidentally clicked on delete perhaps. That's probably what I did without meaning to. The wage bill. If I subtract the wage bill from GDP, ah, again I accidentally chose delete, pardon me. Flip. Okay. If I subtract the wage bill from GDP, I've got profit. Okay. 
Okay, and in the simple Goodwin model, all profit is invested. And investment, of course, is the rate of change of the capital stock. So if I bring down an integral block here, right click and, ah, again, I chose delete, great. Right click and choose flip, and dub double click and define this as capital, and give that initial value, say 300 units. Now, if I wire this all together, I bring down, of course, now uh, the accelerator relationship. So I'll just say, say there's a ratio of three between capital stock and of output and capital stock. Ah, uh, bloody hell. It's always hard doing these things live and you know people are watching. It's so easy to make a keyboard error. Okay, let's now wire, the, wire all this up. So I now connect. That's the wage bill. I need a subtraction block here. Let's bring that down. Okay. So I now say GDP minus the wage bill is profit, which is invested, which integrated becomes the capital stock. And if you divide the capital stock by the accelerator, you have output. And then let's just make it a bit neater to make a bit of space. If you click on those blue dots, you can change the curvature of objects. At the moment, you've got to move each object individually. You haven't yet built uh, grouping and, and moving, but of course, that'll come at a later point. Let's now whack a graph in the middle. And if I now say, grab a copy of the wage rate over here, bring it over here, and the employment rate, copy and whack that there and wire those up and simulate. And by the way, change the runge cutter setting here. Oh, actually, I've got a small step size. It often defaults to a bad, too large a step size. But you simulate it, you get a cyclical economy. Now, that's you saw how fast I could do that. The idea is I want to use this in the second week of a first year class with students and teach them you don't get equilibrium out of dynamic models. You know, that's straightforward. So I've tried to make it easier to use than than Vensim and so on. I find them slightly more difficult to design, not as visual. And just one little trick here as well. I'll, I'll do this in an ugly way. I can make multiple wires here, but I, I drag the wage rate, say, down to this level, and it, whoops, pardon me, and employment up to here. Let's just make it slightly neater by moving those lines around a bit. Once you've made one curve, you get a, another option to make an extra curve. I've now got an XY chart, so I can now do that simulation of the cyclical behavior. All very fast to work with. Various other tricks like that. Um, I've used a lot of different packages, so I'm aware of what's good in one and bad in the other, and I'm trying to combine them all and make a, a better product overall. So I think anybody who used Vensim would agree that's a lot faster than working with Vensim and much more visual. Vensim, you know, you, you know it well. So, But what, what Vensim can't do easily, and I'll now just start a new file, is what this system was designed to do. I wouldn't have done it if we just did that sort of simulation. It can add a banking sector. So you click on the godly table. No prizes for guessing who that's named after. Double click and you get a double entry bookkeeping system. Now you can, you can make that single entry, by the way. You all know I started working in single entry and I had to learn the hard way that double entry was better. But it now forces standards of double entry on here. So if I, for example, say we have an asset for the banking sector, which are loans, and then I create another column I oh, pardon me, click there and create another column and make this a liability, which let's say this is the firm sector's deposits, and then another one again, which I make another liability, of course, which is say workers' accounts. And then finally, have the bank having equity stored in a safe. You must make sure you label these properly, by the way, because the program recognizes what is an asset and a liability and so on. And if I have, as an initial loan of 100 units, maybe 100 million, to the firm sector, I'm leaving out e equity, but obviously we'd want to make that in a more complete model. Once I've done that, I can now add operations. Notice down the bottom of the table, those variables are now being dropped down. So they're now system states. Now when I click on a row here and say, for example, lend money, 
Well, that means you add a loan on the asset side of the banking ledger. Oh, by the way, over here, the program is making sure you've got a zero sum. So I now need to put minus loan inside here somewhere. And let's say it's a loan to the firm sector. Now those two balance, that'll go to zero. Then, of course, once you've hired, once, you, once you're borrowing money, you've got to pay interest on it. So you'd have a payment of interest from this account to that account. And then with the money using Graziani's ideas, of course, you're going to hire workers. So there'll be a wage payment going from here across to here. And then once workers and bankers both have money in their account, they can both consume. So I'll just quickly allow consumption rather than having um, other factors like debt repayment and so on. But I'll bring those in in a moment. And you have consumption by the, this is just a label over here, consumption by the workers as well. I uh, notice I haven't finished the table up there and it's warning me that I haven't. So I need to have minus const b there to make all the balances right. So shut the window and I've now got the basics of designing a simple endogenous money financial system. Now to define elements of this, the level of loans, these are all flows into the system. They're all going to depend upon system states. So if I right click and choose copy, I can take loan over here, right click here and choose copy and take the system state of loans. And if I'm the basic argument I'm going to use uses the idea of a, a time constant, which is a common thing in, in uh, dynamic systems, that you divide the system state by some time parameter, which talks about how rapidly the system would exhaust that particular reservoir. And let's say I'd argue that firms, that banks would would double the amount of money in the loan system over a seven year period. That involves dividing by a time constant of seven. So I'll call this tau underscore L for loan, give it a value of seven for seven years. And then if I now divide, I wire up by saying divide loans by the uh, time constant, that's the rate of creation of new loans. A similar thing for interest rates. Obviously, with interest rates, that is going to be based on the amount of money that's outstanding in loans. And of course, what you're going to do quite simply is multiply loans by a rate of interest on loans. So call that RL, give it a value of 5%, multiply those two together, and I've now defined interest payments. For the wage, I'll make this a, hang on, pardon, I've got to be careful where you click. Okay, make the wage based on the amount of money in the firm's account and the amount of money in the firm's account, the turnover of that annually is GDP. So if I now divide this by another constant which I'll call tau s for surplus, so how long does it take to go from s to m to m plus in Marx's terms and say it's one quarter of a year, then that two of those divided, whoops, pardon me, the division of one by the other is going to give me aggregate demand. And there's going to be a fraction of that that goes to workers. So it's one minus S, where S is the rate of surplus, and say, well, say workers get 70% of GDP, then if I multiply that aggregate demand by 70%, that's how much is going to go to workers' as wages. So I just need to multiply those two together. And now wire that up. I've now both got aggregate to, whoops. Ah. Right click to raise up the menu for inserting and deleting. That's now aggregate demand divided by the workers' share tells you what wages are. And finally, I just need to have consumption by bankers uh, and consumption by workers. And again, I'll rate this the amount of money in their accounts. So there'll be a constant for the rate at which bankers consume, tau b, which is how, well, how, how long would it take them to exhaust their accounts if they did got no money coming in? Well, the answer is basically, let's say, a year, because they've got lots of money. And the workers would uh, empty their accounts in a week if they didn't get any more money coming in. So I'll give that a zero, very 0 0.02, one fiftieth of a year. Divide 
those by the amount in the workers account here and the safe here bring down the divide by block I can copy blocks on the palette by the way to speed things up a bit now wire this all up so safe divided by tau B tells you consumption by bankers workers divided by tau W tells you consumption by workers if I haven't made a stuff up here which is often happens when you do stuff live I can now graph what's happening in the system let's take a copy of loans and put that there and say a copy of firm which is the amount of money in the firm's account see what's going on there and let's also graph GDP or aggregate demand copy that whack it up here bring down another graph okay and then wire those together and simulate and let's hope I get something working out yeah there you go now you would take believe me you'd take about a week to get it not a week maybe a day to get it right in Vensim doing the same thing the flowchart paradigm just does not work for financial flows so the whole idea is to use the tabular approach and here I that's why I doff my cap to win godly and call it a godly table and it's double entry bookkeeping all those sort of consistencies are there and it handles any scale of complexity uh, it'll take us a while to get it all working properly of course but if I load I'll see if I can load an example here where I have a, uh, a multiple uh, banking sector where I've included the uh, government money creation as well as uh, private money creation I think I've got it inside here let's give me a sec here we go yeah so there you have three okay there's a central bank ah the graph, control over graphs is not brilliant yet, as you can see. Let's let's bring up the uh, the treasury. If I can just right click and choose open the godly table. There's the treasury, and I've got that having an asset which is its license to produce bonds. Therefore, the assets assets and liabilities are balanced. I'd like to make it undefined rather than saying a particular number. But then have the operations of the of the um, government selling bonds to the bond, deciding on a deficit, selling bonds to the bond dealers to begin financing that deficit the, the central bank buying the bonds the non-public bank buying the bonds off the off the bond traders uh, and then you then get the central bank's operations and its license is the license to create the currency and so on and then it has in fact I've got it I, I built in there for the heck of it loans to the Treasury but it doesn't need to make any nothing actually goes inside there instead it's by buying and selling bonds of the private bond dealers that it then monetizes part of the deficit and then finally you get the private banking sector which includes the private banking sector's capacity to create create loans now this is when you start letting a larger computer monitor as you can imagine but you can actually build a combined fiat credit money system and then the program will also we're still working in this part but it'll generate the actual equations the system for as well for publication purposes and so on and the ultimate ambition is to take this from the stage where it's a single economy, single banking sector, abstraction to multi-commodity. I've already done that in MathCAD and Mathematica, so I know it can be done. But then have it to go from that to multiple banks, so we have the whole idea of the central bank as a clearinghouse between different banks, and then ultimately multiple, every one of those are now going to be a single economy, and you can then have multiple instances of each of those being a national economy with international trade and so on. So that's the ambition. It's got a long way to go, but it's started. Be delighted to have people at UMKC and elsewhere picking it up and playing with it. We need people to beta test it. We need people to build models with it, give us feedback on how it operates, and we need people to develop it. And I'm also starting a Kickstarter campaign. So that's it. Thank you.